Few summertime traditions are as sacred as stargazing. It connects us to something bigger than ourselves, it inspires a healthy dose of wonder and awe, it's accessible to just about anyone with the ability to get outside and look skyward, and, with the exception of any park passes or camping fees, it's free. Of course, you don't need fancy telescopes or a background in astronomy to bask in the glory of Michigan's night sky. But for an even richer stargazing experience, it helps to arm yourself with a little know-how beforehand. We asked Mary Stewart Adams, a star lore historian, host of the Storyteller's Night Sky, and one of Michigan's most ardent stargazers, for a few tips on how to make these starry summer nights truly shine. Read on for what she had to share. In addition to the internationally designated Headlands International Dark Sky Park near Mackinac City, Michigan has six state-designated dark sky preserves that meet standards ideal for stargazing. Those preserves are at the following state parks, a post shared by Heather Hyam, at Snaphappy, Michigan, on June 5, 2018 at 4.51 p.m. PDT. With more than 3,000 miles of freshwater shoreline, many folks head to Great Lakes beaches to stargaze, and for good reason. The rich darkness of beaches away from light pollution, and the lack of obstruction along the horizon make for a dramatic swath of stars. But, Adams says, Michigan's littler inland lakes have something spectacular to offer, too. When you can be on a lake on a moonless night, you get the stars above you and below you, she says. It's just stunning. You get this moment of as above, so below. A post shared by Headlands Dark Sky Park, at Headlands Dark Ski Park, on August 1, 2017 at 7.40 p.m. PDT One of the best night sky resources in the nation is made right here in Michigan. The Abrams Planetarium Sky Calendar, compiled by the folks at Michigan State University's Abrams Planetarium. The calendar, available for a $12 yearly subscription, is mailed quarterly and offers a monthly night sky map as well as a month-by-month -month look at what's happening in the heavens each night. It gives you the highlights so you can plan, Adams says. It's the best map around. Clear skies are great and all, but even on a cloudless night, if the moon is full, you won't be seeing many stars. A lot of people don't realize that a full moon is going to diminish starlight, no matter where you are, Adams says. But, she notes, you don't have to wait until the exact night of the new moon for beautiful stargazing, either. If you want to see a really beautiful night sky, you want to be going when, the moon, is at crescent phase, because about two to three days after the moon is new, you get this really lovely sliver of a crescent, she says. It's one of the most dramatic things, to see this sickle of a moon. And then when you toss in an evening star like Venus. A post shared by Empire Chamber of Commerce, at Empira, Michigan, on July 9, 2018 at 9.05 a.m. PDT apps like Star Walk, Redshift and Sky Guide can be handy for orienting yourself under the night sky, or even spotting constellations and stars of significance. But try not to rely on them, especially when you're around other stargazers. Cell phone technology is incredible. The apps are really cool, Adams says. But they're not great when you go to a public viewing space because the only thing other people are seeing then is your phone. Many people might not even be aware of the astronomy resources that might be right in their backyards, Adams says. It might be that you go to a planetarium or a big star party and find out from people who are really, really into it, what is the equipment they like, what do they look for, she says. Plus, you might be able to access some extra cool tech that way such as high-powered telescopes that allow you, for example, to view the rings of Saturn, which are especially visible this time of year. In addition to planetariums, observatories and astronomy clubs that might be near you, check the listings for places near you, or near your summer travel destinations, for summer stargazing parties. In Michigan, for example, Several ferryboat companies near Mackinac Island offer guided stargazing tours. Sleeping Bear Dunes also regularly hosts star parties with pros on hand to help visitors get the most out of the experience. A post shared by Jeff Caverly Photography, at Jeff Caverly Photography, on May 18, 2018 at 4.14 a.m. PDT if you're headed out to a stargazing party or public dark sky space.
It's good to be conscientious of contributing to light pollution that might make it difficult for others, or yourself, to see the stars. Park with your headlights facing away from the viewing area, if possible, minimize your cell phone use, and bring along a special red tinted headlamp or flashlight instead of the traditional white light ones. Red light does not affect the eye's pupil in the same way that white light does, therefore allowing everyone's eyes to adjust and stay adjusted to the darkness. The red light is ideal if you're needing to set up camera equipment at night or adjust the setting on your telescope, Adams says. But, she says, you don't want to have it on all the time because the whole point is to experience the dark. Take the time to scope out your stargazing spot while it's still light out, or, better yet, make sure to get there before sunset on your stargazing night. You don't want to arrive for the first time at your spot in the dark, she says. Plus, she says, if you get to your location before the sun sets, you'll be treated to something extra special. One of my favorite times of the night is the time between the sunset and the first star shine, she says. This is a good way to teach yourself, the brightest objects show up first, and eventually you can start to see the Big Dipper and, the stars, Arcturus and Vega. And get oriented to where they are in space.